Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at a fairly mundane looking railway station in Germany. Over there is the town of Sinsheim. Sinsheim Hofbahnhof is the next station nearly a mile north of here. This station is called Sinsheim Museum Stroke Arena. We'll get on to the museum bit, but firstly, just a couple of things. The platform there, you may be able to see it slightly slopes down to a lower level. That's because it's not just served by trains, it's served by tram trains. They're those clever vehicles that run on railway lines and then they suddenly turn off and run down the streets of various towns. So I did see one of those pass through here. That all sounds quite exciting, making this slightly mundane station look a bit more interesting. But if you think that sounds more interesting, then take a look at what's just past what, again, is a fairly mundane looking building. There's something in a minute you can only see here. There's nowhere else in the world where apparently you can now see this site. I'm just going to go along here and look at that. Over there, yes, that's Concord. And that is, I think it's the Tupolev, it's the Russian version of Concord. And it's the only place in the world where you see the two together. So that's the museum part. I think there's a few museums. But anyway, we need to go and have a closer look at those aeroplanes. I'm now just walking across the car park of the museum and look at that. How's was that for a site to a museum? There's also a, a Malev aeroplane, a Hungarian aeroplane. There's helicopters, other aeroplanes. We haven't even gone into the museum yet and this is quite exciting. Now, I'm not so much of an aviation enthusiast. I'm more of a railway enthusiast. But I've just actually spotted some uh, a locomotive in the distance. So before I've even gone in, I'm, you know, this is already like really exciting. There are steam locos in, I understand, and various other things, lots of cars. So I wish I was here in my larder. Didn't bring the larder, I, I flew to Germany. But it just feels funny being like beneath aeroplanes and um, unusual shaped helicopters. Excuse me for sort of not knowing too much. I'm sure the aviation enthusiasts, you know, um, will be able to tell me a lot more you know, than I know. I, I like aeroplanes, but I wouldn't consider myself an aviation enthusiast. I see some steam rollers though, look at that. Steam rollers, um, well, I, mean, I think that's a diesel roller. And then there's another steam roller. I don't know where the entrance is. <laughs> it's almost like I could just get like, uh, well, I'm, I am going in, but it's, without going in, I'm already seeing quite a lot of exciting things. Uh, look, let's have a look at this. It's a British one, actually. Look, it's an Aveling and Porter. Built at Rochester in England. I remember the old Aveling and Porter building. Have a look at link on screen now. It's a video of Rochester Castle back in 2001 and the Aveling and Porter Museum makes a cameo. Sadly, it's demolished. Whoa, whoa, look at that. There's just like aeroplanes. There's aeroplanes everywhere. And I can see the wheels of a steam locomotive. I think um, I'm going to do is just have a look at this little, little diesel loco here. And then I need to go and find the entrance and go inside and, you know, get more excited. Get another nice view of the... The Concorde and the Tuplev. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. As I said, um, it's railways that are my subject. Here we have a little diesel shunting locomotive. Let's have a closer look. I don't know if there's a name plate or, well, there's a few names on it. Is there a works plate anywhere? Because um, when you're wanting to, well, I've got a list of all the preserved locomotives. So I'll probably be able to identify this one. But the easiest way would be if there's a, a works plate on it and I can't see one. But anyway, I'll, I'll find out. Or if you happen to know the works plate, just comment, it makes it quicker for me. Right, I think we ought to go inside. So, at this point I've still not paid to go in. I will next, but there's more things to see before you go in. There's like a few games and stuff and things to do. There's that thing there, that's quite cool. I think you go up like that and then you go down and splash into the water. A bit cold for that today. Bulgarian air transport aeroplane over there, of course, no mistake in the Concorde air, so that's nice, look, you've got Air France Concorde and a smaller Air France aeroplane. Um, as I said, I apologise for my lack of knowledge on some of the aeroplanes. Have a look down here though. Here we have a tank and another diesel loco. She looks, she's called Emma, this one. She was very similar to the one we saw. Um, you're probably not looking though at this diesel loco just then because something else would have just caught the corner of your eye. There's a fire steam loco being lifted up by this rather large crane. So we've got like a plinth rail crane with a steam loco hanging up. So that's, that's quite exciting. There's another 
roller. I wonder if they are diesel. I wonder if the one back there I said was diesel may have been gas. I don't know. So, yeah, look at that. So for those who don't know, a fireless steam loco, you tend to get them... I've seen one at work in Ljubljana Power Station, probably one of the last uh, bits of working steam in Europe. They charge them up with steam and then they can just run all day. Um, what am I supposed to be going up here? Oh, oh, that's exciting. I just need something else. Now, this is another museum. I'm going to have to come back another day and visit it um, because it's not open today. But if we just get over this girder of the bridge. Look at that hanging up there. That is a Wuppertal Schrägerbahn train. That's a different museum, so that's going to be a different video if I get a chance to go there. So, now I think it's time for me to go and go inside and I think I'm going to be here most of the day. So I've just come through the turnstiles, I bought my ticket, cost 19 euros and considering I'm going to be here all day I think that's pretty good value for money. And now just look at this, this is the interior of one of the halls, not the whole museum, this is just one hall. So um, yeah, I'm going to be here quite a long time. And what you do is you, you have to go back outside where we were earlier to walk between the halls and you can come into each hall twice. So I've just come into this hall. So we're going to have a look around. We're not going to, I can't possibly point out every exhibit, but I want to give you the gist of what you're seeing. So right now we're in the middle of all the fancy American cars, which I quite like. Um, as you know, you may know from my other videos, Fur Eastern Block cars, but you know, I do look at this Dodge car here. It's a really nice looking car. And um, on this side, just around here, there's a, there's a Mustang. There's a Mini there. So always nice to see good old British Mini wherever you go. This, as I said, this place is vast. It's, it's hard to convey just how vast this place is. That's the shop there, even the shops bigger than some museums I've been to. <laughs> so it's, and so yeah, walking along here and there's cars. You've probably seen there's a steam motor over there. We're going to have a closer look at that. And there's aeroplanes just hanging up just about everywhere you look. You'll see aeroplanes. I don't know how many aeroplanes there are. I mean, there's a few hundred cars. There's maybe 50 odd aeroplanes. I'm not going to count them. It's, yeah, just a bit mad, really, this place. We'll go around here. There's a American style barber shop. Every now and then you hear the sound of like cars starting up. Look at this, it's like a dirt track race here. And then there you can see the camber of the racetrack. There's a little, well, there's quite a big area outside. I'll, if we can go out this way, I'll show you a couple of things there. And then we'll come back in and then eventually we'll go to the other side of the museum. So have a look, nice bit of sound effects. A few more American cars, Chevy and Oldsmobile. I think that's a Cadillac. I'm not that clued up on American cars. I'm not that into monster trucks, but look at it, it's blooming massive. Look, if I stand next to a wheel, it's nearly, just the wheel's nearly as big as me. So yeah, that looks, you know, I think that's a really nice look of a car, but it's just not my kind of car. Anyway, let's go outside. What have we got out here? So, oh, and by the way, it says IMAX 3D. You can also watch a film. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna be all in German. So I'm not probably going to understand too much of it. And there's just so much else. But yeah, if you come here and you speak German, something else you may wish to do. There's just so much, a few trucks out here. You'll get the gist of it where I am. Um, so yeah, there's a man truck. That's those things I said, you can go up and come splashing down. There's the Concorde, you see the Air France written over there. But over here is a nice British bus. I always like to see something from Britain. I think there's something from quite a few countries, Britain, America, most countries in Europe. Here, there's a load of tanks. Look at this. It's just like, um, now I really don't know a lot about tanks, so I won't show you all of them, but just to give you the idea, look, tanks everywhere. So I think if you like any form of transport, whether it's trains, buses, cars, tanks, aircraft, you, there's going to be something that you're going to enjoy visiting here. And if, if you're like me, well, I, mean, I like railways, obviously, you'll know around if you watch my videos, but I do like other forms of transport, I'm just not as interested in my knowledge on them isn't so great. So it's basically, it's a place that a lot of people would enjoy visiting. To give you an idea of where we are, uh, we're in Hall 1, so there's Hall 2 with the Concords on the roof and there's also Hall 3 and then the station is over there 
As I said, there's another museum nearby. There's also quite a lot of museums, well, most German city centre have a really interesting museum with like at least one steam locomotive. Sometimes they have a tram car. I haven't seen any trams yet. I honestly don't know if there are any, but we'll find out. If there isn't, then, well, we'll, we'll go to another museum one day in a different video. So we're coming back into here now, which is American cars. Those of you who are railway enthusiasts are probably wanting to have a look at that steam lift. So I think what we'll do, we'll go over there, have a look at that side, the hall. Then I'm going to go across, because I've not yet seen the other side. So apart from I know the fact there's a Concorde on the roof. I'm not actually sure what else is in the museum, other than probably a load of very exciting stuff like this. So yeah, they, they, when I came in, the lady said it would take me about three hours to look around. Um, I'm probably... I got here just after 12, I'm probably going to be here, well, it's open till 6, so they might have to kick me out. I don't know, I might be gone before that. I might have to go and have a ride on the tram train before I leave. Anyway, here's a Kriegslok. That's class 52 locomotive. Now, Kriegslok, it means, for those of you who don't know, basically means war locomotive. So, lock is loco. You may hear the term in German, Dampflok, that's a steam locomotive. So, this is a Kriegslok. There was the Class 50, not to be confused with the British Class 50, it's known as the Hoovers, but a Class 50, a German steam loco, these are basically a more, what's the word, austerity, yeah, an austerity version of the Class 50. So here we are, and I, I don't know how many are preserved, but there's, I don't know if there's as many as 100, there's a lot. I've seen them, in fact, I've actually seen them at work in former Yugoslavia, in Bosnia, Herzegovina. Have a look at the link on the screen now. Here's one pulling out of a coal mine with a load of wagons back in 2015, and that wasn't a museum, that was just genuine real steam. On this side, though, look, you can see it's in the camouflaged livery. Because we've come into a very military area, look at this. It's all the military exhibits, so there's lots of tanks, lots of um, aeroplanes, all sorts. Looks funny, though, seeing it in... In, the, in those colours. It's quite nice, it's black on one side. Interesting, there's like a little cab in the tender, and I'm not sure what that's for. If anyone knows, comment. Um, I don't think they could drive from that. I think we'll do, there's a bridge here. Let's go up that bridge over it. Oh, and I think um, if you put a euro in, you might be able to make the wheels turn around. There's loads of things like that here. If you put a euro in this, put you in that, you can play little games and set things up. Earlier on, somebody, there's a, like an old uh, fairground organ. Or cinema organ, someone put a euro in that and it started playing music. It's got up here now. So what else we can find? So much. Look, look at this. It's just like, yeah, everywhere. So it's all, all very interesting. Over there, again, I'm not so interested in that, but there's an exhibition on cycling and different types of rally bikes and everything. So it's. Like, yeah, there's a lot to see. I think you've probably got the gist of that. More aeroplanes. There is German, it has a red star on. Must be Russian aeroplanes or Soviet Union aeroplanes. And it goes on and on. It's huge. What I'm going to do now, we'll go down here. We'll just go up to the other side over there because there's some, you can see some traction engines, which I think we'll have a look at. Then I'm going to go across the road and we'll see what else we can see. Interestingly here, look, it's an aeroplane, it's clearly crashed, possibly gone underwater. So they've brought it out and preserved it as it is in its crashed state, which in a way is quite interesting because it shows, you know, everything that museums don't always need to be stuff shiny and nice, although it looks nice. It shows what actually happened. This is Russian biplane. It's interesting. You can go in some of the aeroplanes, so we'll do that as well. Oh, what's happening here? So I think someone's just put a coin in the oh yeah and it's all strong interaction it's cool so yeah, someone's put a euro in and it the music comes online not online but you know what I mean I won't stand there filming it because it's a bit unfair they put the money in and I stand there filming it but it gives you the idea what you can do there's just so much though I, I can't kind of get over how vast this place is there's a railway wagon there. If you ever watch a war film, if you ever watched a war film, The Train with Burt Lancaster in, if you haven't, recommend that film. You'll see lots of, well, basically you'll see France in under occupied Germany. It's a very interesting film. Lots of good action, steam locomotives. Talking of steam, steam rollers. These ones, I've had a look, are German built, unlike the 
one we saw outside that came from Rochester in England. Look at the size of these two though, these are blooming massive. I've never seen a traction engine. I'm sure I've not seen a traction engine in the UK this big. They're, they're, they're just huge. That's amazing. Yeah, they're, they're huge. There's a, a bus there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to have a look in the other hall and um, see what can amaze me there. This is hall two and here we are up high. And it's pretty big, we're going to go and have a walk all around it but I just want to show you how I got up here. Couldn't really do it on camera but look, I came up this ladder. There was a sign at the bottom, it said use at your own risk. Oh, I saw it for you, they can't be allowed to go up that. But to my amazement you could. I don't think they'd let you in the UK. Anyway, I'm going to climb back down. Yeah, I'm a little bit out of breath as you can see. I'm going to climb back down. I'm going to show you around halls two and three. And there's some fantastic things to see. So I'm just climbing down. There we are. Come back down to the ground. We were up there, up at that platform a moment ago. This is hall two. It's pretty big. There's lots of things to see. Lots of very exciting things to see. Look at these racing cars. I think... I don't know too much about them, um, but I mean they're impressive. It's not something I'm overly interested in. I prefer more everyday cars. I think if I went if I went to a race, no doubt about it, I'd enjoy it. But it's just not something I've ever done. So I don't really know one car from another. So apologies to those of you who do know, you know, more about it than me. Um, you know, then sorry I can't tell you more about them. Look over there, the blue flame, that's one of those world record holding really really super fast cars so it's all really quite exciting oh just over here look, there's a couple of Porsches so they're cars you know I know and you do see we're going to walk through here I think once we get through here we kind of go past the sort of super expensive cars and the cars that you know you probably will or probably more likely to see on the road rather than just at a classic car show or racetrack or a museum like this old Mercedes there get to him I mean it's so like a car like this there's a Mercedes here I've seen you see cars like that in the UK driving around sometimes we're going to here ah now look there's more racing cars but I've just spotted a car one of my favorite types of cars oh and by the way look at all this I think this is bits of aircraft engine and there's the wheels of an aircraft we are going to get onto aircraft as promised you saw at the beginning of Concorde we're going to go and have a look at that but have a look at this one of my favourite cars, it's Trabant. You may have seen my videos, I've done quite a lot of um, trips out with the IFA club in the UK, the IFA is the company who made Trabants, we've been around, so if you want to have a look at the screen now, it's one of the videos, one of my trips out with the IFA club. Quite nice to see it next to a Mini, it's funny, every time you see a Trabant in a car museum, they nearly always put them next to a Mini, it's kind of like the, uh, the British and then the East, and sometimes you get a Volkswagen Beetle, in fact, here we have, so there's a TRG in the middle, but there's a Volkswagen Beetle, so it's quite a nice lineup of you know nice little cars. Volkswagen Camper there. Oh look, look at this. There, it's a model there of a Concorde. I think that's a model of Concorde, the Concorde they got here, which we're gonna go and see. Being delivered, it must have come by barge, because how else do you get <laughs> without flying it, of course? How would you get them there? It's um it's such a shame Concorde's not flying anymore, but we'll talk more about Concorde when we go and have a look at the Concorde. Here's some very old vehicles, very old cars. Interesting, but again, it's not my kind of scene. I don't know. I could stand and read them. That's a Peugeot. I wouldn't have looked at that and thought, oh, there's a Peugeot. But it is, a, it is Rolls Royce. Again, when I'm saying Rolls Royce, I might have recognized, well, I'd definitely recognize it's a Ford, because it says it. Model T, Model T Ford's an older car, no, but yeah. Another Model T Ford, that one's a fire engine, but a lot of them I'm just probably going to look at and tell you what they are because it does tell you. And it does have the information in English and in German, which is quite good. So, you know, it's okay for everyone. There's a biplane up there. Again, I don't know what sort, I just know it's a biplane. It's interesting. Look, this is a steam. I can. Or is it actually? It's got a flywheel. I was going to say it was a steam powered, but I've just read there benzene. So I think it's like an internal combustion engine. And there's a flywheel that spins round and somehow drives it. It'd be quite fun to have a drive in one of them. Look at these huge Mercedes. We are in Germany, so it seems to be quite bright. Lots of Mercedes. Whoa, look at that. That is so cool. It's like a motorbike that has one wheel which you sit in the middle of. I'd love to have a go on that. That looks, it just looks like unreal, but fun and practical. Imagine that though. You know, if you turned up to work or turned up to see your mates in one of them. 
wonder if there's any on eBay. Anyway, there's an organ there. Ah, and then behind that is a steam locomotive. So we're kind of getting to my kind of thing. I think this is possibly one of the fastest in Europe. I know Germany has had some pretty fast steam trains. Not as fast as the A4s. I don't think anyone's going to beat our, a our famous A4s. Oh look, some sewing machines. I can see there, I can see the word FAF, that's one I recognise. FAF is a sewing machine I recognise. I wonder if there's any, ah, uh, Singer, of course comes from Scott. Singer sewing machine comes from Scotland. I, I can't see any, I wonder if there's any larders. There is a sewing machine larder, nothing to do with the kind of car I drive, but there is a larder sewing machine. So, we have this Pacific, it's amazing, great to see, big Pacific, I'd rather see it out on the main line, but anyway, I'm not going to complain, it's, it's, it's good to see it here. Here we have some LGB model trains, American, American model trains. On here, here's a big layout, now it's not running at the moment, so what I'll do, I think you have to put a euro or so in, make it go, come back later and film that, and um, what perhaps I'll do, what I'll do, I'll put, I'm, I'll publish it as another video, and I'm putting a link on the screen now, so that's, you can see that running. Look at that, another fairground organ. There's a big stationary, I wonder if it's a steam engine, it's certainly a big stationary engine, possibly a winding engine, more super luxury vintage vehicles. Interesting to see. I think that's a Maybach, yeah. I'm sure that sign there, it's a Maybach, that's like a, even more, it's like a souped up version of Mercedes basically. That's a Mercedes, a big purple one, but I think most of these are either Maybachs or Mercedes. What's this? Is that a, yeah, that's a Maybach, that's a more, more modern vehicle. And here's a steam locomotive. You can go up and have a look on the footplate wall, there's somebody else up there. It's about to do that later on. Look at this, so it's a, it's a 210. Now, I said in the other hall, I said about the Class 50, that a Kriegslok was like a war version of a Class 50. I said, don't get confused with the British diesel Class 50. This is the Class 50 I was talking about. So here we have a Class 50. So basically, this is very similar to a Kriegslok, but a Kriegslok is an austerity version. Now, this one I'm slightly confused about, because on the front, it's got it as Class 43, but its side plate has a 44. And when I had a look earlier at the... The um, description on it says it's a class 44, so I'm, I'm not sure why, whether, that, whether they were rebuilt maybe. They're both two 10 O's, so same wheel arrangement as a 9F. What I'm going to do, when I finish making the video, I'm going to walk around with my notebook and I'm going to write down all the numbers, and I've got my Platform 5 German railway books. I've also got a book, Preserved Locomotives of Europe. I'll have a look in that and I will be able to tick them off because I've spotted them. I've seen these locomotives. That one has also got a tender cab. Um, let's have a, have a look. It's, uh, it's great to see these steam locomotives there. I really do like to see them. There's a glider up there. I won't worry about going in the cab because um, I've been in cabs of steam engines before and there's other people. Let's have a look at some of these cars. So let's go up there in fact. There's various cars. And also we'll get quite a nice view if we go up the stairs. Another organ. See what this museum, this part of the museum reminds me a bit of. If you want to have a look, is the um, Pallet Steam Motor and General Museum in Jersey. That was quite an interesting museum. It was like this on a smaller scale, but it had some steam engines, some cars, some organs. Oh, NSU. That's cool. NSU, which is um, a type of German car. You don't see many of them. As you know, I drive a Lada, and somebody said to me, oh, is that an NSU? I said, no, it's a Lada. I didn't know what NSU was at the time. There's an old Audi there. Renault 5 Turbo. And uh, another Mercedes. You sometimes see Mercedes like this in the UK, driving around. What's this? Another. That's another Audi. Might be wrong. Apologies if I am. Another Merc there. There's various motorbikes all along here. BMW one there. Again, I only know it because I just read BMW. <laughs> so it's. Um, it basically has, I think it's got every mode of transport here. I've not yet seen any trams. I'm not criticising, but, you know, maybe when um, there's some new... Uh, maybe when Heidelberg, which is just up the road, retires some of its older trams, maybe they should get one and display it here. Look at that, though. That's, that's where we were a moment ago. We were... Well, we started up on that, that red platform there. It's nice they have these walkways. 
You can just sort of walk around, see everything uh, uh, down at a level with everything. But you can come up here as well and look down on everything and sort of really appreciate it from different angles. I think it's, I really think it is a fantastic museum. To give you an idea of size, it's probably, it's at least twice the size of the National Rail Museum in the UK. So those of you watching, if you've been to the National Rail Museum, it's a lot bigger. This is a lot, lot bigger. Okay, it's not just trains, it's, it's all sorts of things. It's a bit like how I remember the Science Museum to be in London when I was little. I haven't been there for years. Um, but it's just got such an interesting mix of so many different things. And like I say, you don't have to be an enthusiast of any particular one. It's just good fun to walk around and appreciate seeing different forms of transport. And transport is part of everyone's life. Everyone uses transport. So, you know, you'll, you'll see something here that's fairly familiar with you to you. Another huge stationary engine down there. Some nice little cars here. There's some, look, a bubble car. I'll have a look at them. Let's go back to that. Uh, Fiat, Fiat 500, I quite like them. And that's a Fiat 600. Nice little cars. See this bubble car? What's cool about them is that the door is on the front, so it opens. I'll have to have a go in one of these. So see how it opens up. See the lady in there? Don't you mind me filming her? So, yeah, it opens up like this. Now look at this weird car. It's, it looks the same both ways. Obviously this is the front, because it opens up. Although, we, yeah, no, this is the front, because it's got a steering wheel. But if you look, the seats in the back face backwards. So if you reversed, you could, like... You'd be going forward, and then there's like a door on each side. That's that's quite cool. It's the only time I've ever seen a car that looks like it's like a little rail car. It's like the same at each end. Various other little cars to see. So much to see here. Motorbikes, more Fiat's, scooters. It's yeah. I'm I know I'm repeating myself. I'm saying it's amazing. There's so much, but I kind of can't get over how much there is to see. Like I said, I'm not counting the exhibits. Now we're going to go through here into Hall 3. What we're going to do with Hall 3, we're going to just have a look down at it from above because it's very sparsely spaced out. But have a look at this, it's quite a, as you walk in, it's you just sort of like, wow, look at that. This is all like the racing, like the Red Bull racings and various other racings. Again, apologies, I don't know too much about racing and thing, but it's, it's all the different racetracks. And I had a walk around down there earlier and it's, it's quite exciting. Some scooters there. The two stroke scooters. All we're doing now though is we're going along here. I'm just trying to find my way up to the roof. Because as we saw at the beginning of the video when we were at the railway station, we could see the Concorde and the Tupolev, the Russian version. And you're probably wondering when we're ever going to get there. But there's been so much other things to see on the way. So we're going to go up there soon. What we're going to do now though is there's one other hall I want to show you downstairs. So I'm going to go back downstairs, show that to you and then we're going up on the roof. So admittedly I was so excited about going up on the roof to show you the Concords. I very nearly missed out a fairly important part of the museum. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at that first. We're down in that hall um, I want to say important part of the museum. I know different people have different interests. But for me, being the person who likes railways, there's a few locomotives which I would like to show you before we go up on the roof. So let's go back into Hall 2. Because you could easily miss these. Go through. Oh, look, there's another one of those, much older one of those really fast cars. And that's not very technical to have really fast cars. But there's lots of, lots of really really fast cars. Let's go through here. Mercedes and a Ford and a steam loco. So let's go and have a look at them. Well this is quite interesting. Now look his various trophies and cups won by racing drivers who have taken part in all these races. So it's all very impressive. Anyway, here's the hall with some steam locomotives. Oh look we can go up on let's go in the cab of this one. This nice little tank engine. What is it? So it's an O a, oh, not really. A, I don't think we have any UK tank engines of this wheel arrangement. We go up, up here, have a look inside. So here we are. And if we look out there, well, there's a, a steamroller. See how small a steamroller is compared to a big steam locomotive. Class 41. I have travelled behind some class 41s. 
there's uh, some electric locos. We're going to have to go and have a look at those. Um, this is a nice little tank engine. This, again, um, I'm not entirely sure what this one is, but I'll be able to find it in my book. And like I said, I'm going to walk around soon. I'm going to jot down the numbers. This is my quite a cute little steam loco. Built by, built by Henschel. Well, it says it worked the last steam powered trains in Germany in 1977. Of course, there is still some steam if you go to the Hearts. Regular steam, there's lots of mainline steam. There's that Aveling and Porter, Aveling and Porter steamroller. Now, as for these class 41s, the first standard gauge steam loco I rode behind in Germany was a class 41. It was 411144, and that was from Nordhausen, yes, the end of the Hearts, back round to Venigerode, obviously via the standard gauge line. So, always remember that was my first um, so was a classmate of this loco. There's a, an electric loco there, class 160. Now these two electric locos here, these are known as crocodiles, because as you can see, they kind of... Well, the other day I said to my girlfriend, I said, oh, we, we were at a model railway near here, and I said to her, that's called a crocodile. She said, yeah, I can see why. Um, she wasn't so sure what a rabbit was until I showed her a picture of the class 218s, uh, nicknamed rabbits, because of, they have like rabbit-like ears, but if you see them from a different angle, you can't see. But yeah, these, these are crocodiles, so it's really nice to see these. Um, or at least I, I think they're crocodiles. It's pretty someone commented, yeah, they're not Anyway, look at that bike up there. It's got like 12 people pedalling. That must be a quite a cool bike. We come along here. There's a picture there of an S160, which looks suspiciously like the Churnit Valley Railway. Anyway, so we have these. Oh, look, so you can have a look see how old this one is because the works plate on it. So its running number is 14282. Built in 1921, and its works number is 2779. So that's its works on. But this one, oh, this one was built in 1922, I can see on the display. Its number is 1089.06. Oh, but that's an OBB, so that's an Austrian Railways locomotive. So, yeah, that's not a Deutsche Bahn locomotive. They're a bit like a steam loco because they have connecting rods. See how they have, this one's even more obvious, they have like a big powering wheel here, which drives the other wheels through connecting rods in a similar way to how a steam loco would work. Anyway, I think it's time we went up onto the roof. So I'm almost at the top of this spiral staircase. It's getting quite hot, so I'm glad to get outside onto the roof. But it's a lot cooler. Here we are, out on the roof. There's Concord. We better go and have a look inside. There's various other airplanes here, look. There's literally walking under the wing of one of them. So it's, uh, it's just so, you know, the museum, as if the museum's not good enough, you get to go out on the roof and see them. Oh, and by the way, the station's called a museum stroke arena. There's your arena. Yeah, how many museums do you get to just walk out onto the roof? Okay, yeah, I know we're on the walkway, but you get to go on the roof and go in Concord and the Triple F. It's the only place where I understand where the two are together. So it's fantastic. So that's the other arena over there, the Blue Building. So we're up on the roof of the second hall. And then that's hall three, that one there. The railway line is just over there somewhere. And we're just walking underneath Concord. So we're gonna go up, up that spiral staircase. And we're gonna go inside Concord. It's something I never ever thought I'd do when I withdrew Concord from flying. Okay, we're not flying, but we're gonna be up in the air. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I'm very excited. Now what happens is they have, um, on busy days, basically you'd have to queue up to get in. So I've done quite well, because I've come on a not very busy day. I've come on a weekday in November. So it's not very busy here. So I think I've picked my time for my visit quite well. Do walk along here, see various other airplanes, other Air France and the Bulgarian Airlines aeroplane and I think another one over there I saw Lufthansa written on so you get to here so it says there's 29 free spaces on this concourse so we go through these turnstiles so it's not that big in size they don't want you know hundreds of people so please pass the turnstile completely okay so we're just going through we're in we're going to go up up that spiral staircase and this will take us into concourse and then when we're done Concorde we'll do the triple F so we can you know compare the two 
supersonic aircrafts together. And of course, as we go up here, the view's just getting better. I can see over there on the hill, there's a castle. Probably video for another day if I come here again. Maybe I will. So we're just going to make our way, making our way up. See now, just beneath the fuselage and the wings. I remember seeing Concourse flying. I remember once being at level crossing a Datchet railway station. The gates went down to see a train for trains to pass. And I looked up and saw Concorde, and I was more interested than in that. So here we go. There's the tail of Concorde. It's on a slope, and look at this. That's just like uh, looking ahead. So into Concorde we go. Wow. Of course, it's facing upwards. It's in like the takeoff position. Feels a bit weird walking along like this. Let's go inside. Have a look. That'll be your refreshments trolley. So it's quite a narrow airline. You know, it's, it's the fuselage inside is smaller, it's two plus two seats. They've taken some out to make it easy for you to walk through. And the windows, we'll just have a look out the window. If you can see much, but anyway. So there's a lady enjoying her flight. So we're gonna make our way right up to the front, to the cockpit, have a look. Another lady enjoying a flight when you've got food and everything with your flight. Not like the today's budget airlines, it was all very posh. There's a toilet, another toilet. Like sitting on that one. If we get to here. Well, it, it just feels a bit weird walking, so apologies. You might not look it on camera because we're on a slope. It just feels a bit strange. Anyway. So I'm now walking between where well, there's two seats for, to protect the seats that are in this casing. We're almost up at the cockpit now. Another toilet. And then look at this, it's complicated. Order everything for the flight. And there is the cockpit. Very small in here, but I never ever thought I'd make it into the cockpit of Concord. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go out, we're going to go and explore the top left now. I've just come through the other turnstile, we're going into the top left now. It's funny, when you look through there, we were in there a moment ago, it just feels strange. Anyway, we're going to go up, this one's not quite so high, but we've got up another spiral staircase. I'll tell you the other thing I think is quite funny. When I was in there, I didn't like to film it, but there was an elderly lady. She had, you know those walking poles you have when you go hill walking? She was walking with them inside the Concorde. She'd obviously been here before and knew, you know, that's what you do, or that's what would be helpful. So there's Concorde, and this is the Russian version of Tupolev. It's, like I said, it's the only place in the world where you can see the two together, so, yeah, quite cool. Tail and nose of one, two of them here together. Let's go inside. Wow, it's... Quite cool. So oh, here we are inside. And there's no seats down there, so I'm not sure if this is deliberately different or if there was more room for crew and everything. I don't really know where they flew. Like I say, I remember the Concorde flight. Oh, this is interesting. That must be about how they bought it here. Clearly, a picture of Russia. Must have come here by a barge. I remember seeing Concorde flying. I don't know where these planes flew. Whether they flew to the UK, I expect someone watching might know. Have a look. It's uh, yeah, quite sort of. Russian looking inside. Orange seats all <laughs> these fell over then because it's it's steep. It's it's uh, it's not gonna pick it out on camera, but it's disorientating when it looks like it should be flat, but you're going up a hill. Anyway, I think I need an oxygen mask as well. Let's go up to the cop here. I quite like the colours of the seats, quite bright. Also in there has a toilet. The toilet's very sort of more basic looking. Go through in the middle of the aircraft. Again, they've taken out more seats for the display room. I think that map shows the route this aircraft used to get here. So it must have come down the Rhine. Imagine seeing that, a supersonic air jet coming down the Rhine on a barge. It kind of doesn't seem right. It feels like, it's, I think it's such a shame Concours aren't flying anymore. I'd love to see them fly again. You know, if there'd been like a replacement, like a new supersonic jet, but we've effectively gone backward. So anyway, maybe one day. Anyway, we're at the cockpit now. So this is the cockpit of the Tupolev. 
funny to you know to go in both within sort of five minutes of each other anyway as you can see i'm a bit puffed out i'm gonna make my way out one or two more things i want to show you and i'm gonna make my way back to the station so there's the triple ev there's concord i keep saying concord there is of course more than one concord I flew here with Lufthansa to Germany and as I left Heathrow I did see a Concorde, the one displayed at Heathrow Airport. Here we have another Air France aeroplane. You can see the Concorde there is Air France. You can have a, I won't go in that one because I said it's very hard walking with a camera on such an odd angle. There's that little Bulgarian Airlines aeroplane. What we're going to do though, we are going to go in a couple more aeroplanes and you'll see why in a minute because there's just one thing that's quite exciting you can do here, which I just could not not do. Uh, you'll see that in a moment. Oh, and um, when we were here a moment ago, weren't we? I mentioned over there is the arena. There's a hotel just there, so if you're thinking of coming here, stay just there if you wanted to. Anyway, we're going to go, I'm just walking under the fuselage now, this little Bulgarian Airlines aeroplane. Um, and now we're under the wing. feels funny when you sort of see aeroplanes like this. There's this Lufthansa aeroplane. Let me go and have a look inside that. Um, there's also another Lufthansa aeroplane over there. Now, as for this aeroplane, thinking, what is this I've got in my hand? Well, you may have noticed this one, there's another way out. If we go around here, look at that. So there's that Bulgarian airline. There's that tube. So, I expect you've guessed what I'm about to do. We're just going to get into this Lufthansa aeroplane. And I've got this. I'm going to go down the slide. Um, I don't know if adults are supposed to, but I just couldn't not do it. Oh, this is a really weird feeling because, again, when I've taken all the seats out, it's on a slant, it's going up. At least the Concords were level. This is really, really weird feeling walking through here. So I'm just going to get through here as quick as I can. I'll let you have a quick look at the cockpit, though. There you go. Yeah, there's not much to see in there. Well, there is if you know which one, but we'll get out here now. I'm going to throw that out there, out of here. Not this. I don't think you're supposed to do this, let alone if you're an adult, but with a camera in one hand, a rucksack on your back, it's hard work. Anyway, that's the, looking down the side. So I've got to... When I was little, my favourite trick that used to really annoy people was to get to the top and then send, send the, um, the mat down without me. I'm not going to do that now, but I was a bit worried then. I might have accidentally done it. Anyway, I think I'm not quite in position. Excuse me. I'm just going to have to pause the camera to get myself in position. Okay, I'm ready. There's the reins. Let's go. Shuffle forward, shuffle forward. Looking down. Here we go. Well, this is fun. Oh, and that was great fun, even if I am not supposed to be doing that. I don't know if I am or not. But this way I've seen no other adults doing it. I didn't actually see any other children do that either though, so I think it's just it's not a very busy day, but that was that was great fun. <sighs> really puffed out there. Um all that running around on the roof and everything. I think I need a cup of tea. There's a big there's another cafe. So I'm gonna go around there and get a cup of tea. And I'm gonna have a wander around again, just enjoy being here. It's a fantastic museum. So much to see. I couldn't possibly show you everything. As you, as you did see though, it's very easy to get to if you'd like to come and visit this museum for yourself. Yeah, do. You could go to Heidelberg, and um, it's a lovely city, Heidelberg, not far from here, probably about 45 minutes on a train. Go to Heidelberg, come here on the train for the day, explore. There's other, like I say, there's another museum next door. My intention is to go there and make another video, but that's not open today, and I think I've had too much museum for one day, as much as I like it here. I'll tell you one thing this place is missing, and I'm not knocking it, we could have a miniature railway, but then I suppose most places that have a miniature railway don't have a Concorde and a Tupolev. In fact, nowhere else has Concorde and a Tupolev, so you get, I mean, anyway, it's fantastic here. I really enjoy it, so thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Goodbye.